right away very good students, you know, like Ken Luce, and I was very fairly strict about certain things, you know, and I said, you know, I'm here to coach you about composition and organization and thinking as you go down the line. I'm not here to rub your back. You'll get plenty of that anyway. I see a change in the students and I see it. I see a change in what is seen and what is valued. It seems less in the area of a private and philosophical point having to do with a larger picture, an observer, say someone like Albert Peacom Ryder. You know, when you look at Ryder's paintings, you could say, oh my God, this has got to, the world must have been very strange at this time. And of course it was. Students have changed. They believe that everything they do is wonderful. I don't think they experience very much. I think you have to go through a lot of stuff to find out what floats. Th think about the writers who stand at their typewriter like Hemingway and type until noon and maybe get a sentence that works. Nowadays, you just paint, paint, well, that's done. Paint, paint, paint that's done. Paint, paint, that's done, that's done. I do think it's really important for a young artist to travel and look I do think that, I mean, you should at least travel to the Museum of Fine Arts and look. And my first advice is always to go in there without your telephone and look at the paintings. Don't look at the label, look at the paintings. Look at the paintings and look at them close. Um, look at them far, far away, but get close to them, see what goes on in them. You see the detail there. They're, Mondrian's paintings are thrilling. If you get close to them, there is just this Held, held breath quality to the, the variations in the tonality. So, so extraordinary. That led him to the final great paintings, uh, like Broadway Boogie Woogie.